what's up so I wanted to do a uh, modern deck tech on um, ad nauseum and uh, this is my take on the deck I uh, just built it a few days ago um, this is the uh, this is a version that runs spoils of the vault which can make it a little more explosive it operates a little bit differently than the uh, I guess the regular version of Ad Nauseum, you know, the mana base is way different, and, uh, they use tutoring effects, or anticipates, or telling time, instead of spoils of the vault, to just, you know, some extra ways to filter your deck, but, uh, first I'll go over the mana base, um, we've got two charge lands, um, two dread, tri dread ship reefs, um, they can help you combo off a little easier, you know, without having some of your fast mana. Um, for the fast lands, we have a playset of Dark Slick Shores and a playset a playset of Sea Chrome Coasts. Um, for fate for basic lands, we're running five total: two islands, one plains, and one swamp. Um, there's a lot of interactions in modern that you know that you can end up getting the land because of something they do or whatever. But uh I think five is a good number. Six feels like too many. And pulling the untapped land when you're getting ready to combo off is pretty good most of the time. And uh as long as you have at least one basic land, Blood Moon doesn't really mean anything against our deck. Because we can just play out a Pentad Prism for two Sunburst and use it. To filter our mana by the Lotus Blooms, or we want to go off, and we also have the Dread Ship Reefs, so you know we can charge that up with the red mana and pull out whatever kind of combination of blue and black mana that we want. So, pretty sweet land. Um, I think two is good. I don't know if you want to go up to three. Um, for temples, we have four total, one Temple of Enlightenment, three Temple of Deceit. It could be good for filtering the deck. Um, some of the decks are playing five and six. The other version of Ad Nauseam usually plays eight, well, between two and eight. So, I guess it depends on what you like. I like having the City of Brass, that's why I kind of cut down on them in the basic lands. Um, I like playing City of Brass as opposed to the uh, Gemstone Mine. Um, they're a lot cheaper for one thing, but I just, I you know, taking the the pain from it every turn isn't that bad. Since you're not looking to go past turn four, five, or six, especially against decks where your life total is kind of under a threat in the first few turns against Burn and Aggro decks. They're not really going to have a way to stop your combo. Like a control deck would. I think it's a control deck. The life doesn't matter at all. Life really doesn't matter, so... It's important to remember you can't run Manic Influence or something that, that asks you to pay a life. Yeah, I mean, if you're at negative life or zero or one, you can't pay. I guess if you're at one, you could pay. But, um... Just keep that in mind that it needs to deal damage to you. Okay, so the deck, pretty basic stuff. Um, for mana, we've got four Lotus Blooms, four Pentad Prism. Um, for some protection, we run three Pact of Negation main. Um, for, for filtering, we have four Serum Visions, four Sleight of Hand, Three spoils of the vault. Um, for the combo, you have four angels grace, three Phyrexian unlife, four ad nauseum, and since we're running spoils, make sure that you have um, two lightning storms or two conflagrate or one of each. I like one of each. Um, on moto, conflagrate is easier to to kill somebody with. It's not 
as hard as Lightning Storm is because you got to retain priority and it takes so long with Lightning Storm. Conflagrate's pretty a lot easier. I mean, it's not at instant speed, but a lot of times you're just going off during your main phase, unless you're playing against a control deck or something crazy like that, where you're going to do stuff when they tap low or whatever it is. So play one of each because if you spoils, you don't want to run the chance of uh, removing your only win condition in the deck. And uh, spoils a lot of the time is used as a way to cycle. Like if you know that you scribed something to the top of your library with a serum visions or a temple, you just grab it during their end step or whatever. And you just draw that card, you know. You dig a little bit deeper in your library. Then you have the four Simeon Spirit Guides for your mana. Um, for the sideboard, not 100% on the sideboard yet. Just started testing the deck, but uh, easy four of, at least three of, is Leyline of Sanctity. Um, it protects you against so many decks in so many different ways, but mainly the hand disruption and the uh, burn matchups. So it's an obvious sideboard option. Um, darkness is very important, or any fog. There's some white fogs that you might prefer to play. But uh, definitely important against Infect and Aggro decks and stuff like that. Uh, two Hercules Recall against Affinity. Or some kind of artifact heavy deck that you might go up against. It's basically a time walk against Affinity. They'll just play their hand out next turn, but it'll get all their crap off the board, you know. It's great after they, if they, if they try to go for a kill with a... Uh, Arcbound Ravager, let them sack all their crap and then jump them back to their hand and they're left without very much. Um, one Slaughter Pact, one Path to Exile to uh, deal with troublesome creatures like the Hate Bears, stuff like that, and the Angel that won't let you play a spell of the color of the Chosen. I can't think of her name right now, but um, I like to play one of each color that can deal with a permanent, whether it be, you know, if it's a creature, but one black, one white, and you have Equity and Truth, just a general catch-all. Pretty much comes in in every match, post-sideboard, most every match. Um, one Patrician Scorn, so if you're playing a deck that brings in Ley Lines, Mirror Match, stuff like that, you know, you'll you'll pull your library. You played Angel of Grace that turn, cast it for free, get rid of their Ley Lines so you can target them. Um, Gigadros, Gigadros. Um, mainly against the control matchup, you can use it to uh, tap their lands on their end step, so you can go off on your turn. Um, you can use it against twin, stuff like that. Uh, see, Laboratory Maniac. Um, alternate win condition, haven't had a chance to use him yet, but he's a cool card. Uh, play against a deck. They're always going to remove all their removal out as much as they can. So you can bring him in, drop him down on your turn three. On turn four, you can go off with just um, with just three mana is all you need. Um, during your upkeep, cast Angel's Grace, or if you have Phyrexian on life out, if you manage to get it out some way. But during your upkeep... I mean, actually, it just costs two mana. So, Laboratory Maniac, cast an Angel's Grace in your upkeep, cast Darkness for a I mean, not Darkness, but uh, Spoils of the Vault for a card that isn't in your library. And then, during your draw step, you'll draw and you don't have any cards in your library, so you'll win. Or you can do it main phase, or when, you know, you can do it main phase with Serum Visions. Do the same thing Angel's Grace or Phyrexian Unlife. Spoils for a card that isn't in your library, cast Serum Visions, you win. So uh, we'll start sticking some games up and see how it goes, and maybe I might change. I might try the version that uh, has the different mana base, which would be this one. It has the uh, Useju and uh, Teleria West. A lot different, you know. It's a lot more. It has the Shock Land stuff like that, Pure Through Depths, Telling Time, those kind of cards. So I'm not sure. I like. I think I like the spoils version better. It seems a little more explosive, a little more consistent. Maybe not sure yet, but I'm gonna try it out and uh, let you guys know what I th know what know what I think. Thanks.